Hi, uh, you may have noticed Google added rubrics. I'm going to go through quickly how to use uh, Google rubrics in the classroom app in order to create a rubric. Um, we're going to go off the assumption that you already have a uh, rubric created like this right here. So I already have one that I'm going to copy from. And you'll notice that. Uh, Alright, so in here, what you'll notice is that you have a create rubric button. I've got my instructions, I've got you know all my attachments, so I've got everything set up. I'm ready to create my rubric. Alright, um, so I'm going to click create rubric. Um, there's a couple little tiny tricky things. So I'll click create rubric, and here we are in our rubric maker. Um, use scoring, you know, you can turn it off if you want or whatever. Uh, sort orders by um, descending or ascending, meaning you want them to go up or down. We'll get back to that in a minute, but I will tell you that Google likes it if you have your highest points to the left. Um, once you go in there and grade, you're going to scroll. The scroll side will be over um, to the right. So you want to, you know, everybody has rubrics that are a little bit different, but you want your rubrics to be over to, your highest points to be over to the left. Points, level, and description. Level is if your points are different than your level. I'm going to leave that blank for now, but you can play around with that a little bit on your own. All right. Um, so my first criterion uh, title will be, I may even change it later, but it's, right now it's going to be Understanding Computing Devices. All right. And um, the most points, they can score four points. Okay. And what do they score four points for? Um, uh, the outputs of the app are clearly described and could be used to address the problem. So that'll be my four point. Okay. And for three points, click the plus sign to add your next level. Copy that in there. So we'll do this. All right. So uh, I can duplicate that if uh, a lot of this is going to be very similar and, and fill it in similar to uh, creating a quiz or filling out something in Google Classroom. Or I can add an additional criterion um, right here. And so that's how I, I start to build out my rubric. Now, like I said, you can change uh, descending to ascending, and it just uh, points the one over here and the four over here, the highest score. But I would tell you from um, the little bit that I've used Google Classroom that you're not going to want to do that. You're going to want to leave it like this so that your highest points are over to your left, and it'll be easier to grade when you go through um, all your assignments and you begin grading. Um, so I'm going to take a break now and finish out my rubric, and then I'll create another video. Yeah, I'll create another video, and we'll come back and... I'll talk about using that rubric in order to grade things. Thanks. Bye. All right, I'm back. I have my completed rubric now uh, here. Um, what you'll notice is that we've got it all filled out. Now, how do we use it? All right. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, you have your list of classwork, your stream, and your classwork, and you've got all your assignments in here. And so you go to it, and you'll notice under here that um, you got your rubric and everything here. And, you can click right on view assignment or you can click on turned in and assign you can see and then when you clicked on turned in um, what will happen is it'll give you all the kids that uh, all the students who have turned in stuff and who have it and from there you're going to be able to uh, see this screen right here all right and so this screen has their work uh, you know we're going to assume you know I just created all this but we're going to assume that the student uh, did a great job here with the peer review and then here in the project guide and this tab right here will allow you to see the files that they turned in and you can go through and and uh, make comments you can come out here and click and make comments to give them feedback which is handy uh, there's a comment bank where you can um, create comments and it'll automatically fill them and that's super handy too um, so you can create all these comments so that they can get that feedback that they need um, but while you're doing it the other thing that you're going to want to do while you're providing that assessment and providing that feedback and 
and looking at their turned in work is you're going to want to grade automatically. And um, so you'll see this tab over here. There. <laughs> that works better. All right. So um, you'll see the rubric right here, and you can click to score. The problem here for me, um, being so busy, I, you know, I, uh, I want to be able to read it. So you can click this arrow right here and expand and see sometimes it's partial. And then you have to click it up and click again. And if you have multiple monitors or some situation where you can do that, one thing that's really handy here is this little button right here. So this little button right here will allow you to expand the entire rubric. Uh, you can alt tab if you only have one screen. But one thing you can do is, is move that over to your other screen and so I have this on one page while I grade on the other um, and I mean that's super handy so I'm looking at my rubric on one page and to see what the instructions are and then so I come over here and I can click four or three or two or one this it adds it up right here and I can go through that for each section of the rubric um, and then at the end, I can add private comments that I'm uh, overall comments that I may not have added specifically to different parts of the assignment. Um, and then one thing I noticed is that uh, this total score right here doesn't automatically uh, fill in right there. So you, you know whatever the total score here, if it's 27 out of 28, you'd, you know you put 27 or whatever. But um, that's how you do it. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Thanks for watching and good luck.